Blog Talk Radio. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Hi everyone, it's Chatting with Nat. Yes, it's Nat Dean, it's Natalie Jean. And today we have singer-songwriter and entrepreneur, Dinkra. I'm always going to mess up her name, I don't know why. But Dinkra is an Atlanta, Georgia, based female singer-songwriter whose love for music started when she was just four years old. Music has always been her escape and the death of her, both of her parents at such a young age is what drives her to work and even harder at her craft in hopes that her parents, if they are watching, sees that she hasn't given up on her dreams. Inikua has graced numerous crowds throughout the USA and she's, she sees international doors opening for her in the near future. Inikia is your ordinary girl next door with a unique sound, catchy lyrics with a soulful twist. Look out world, Inikia is here. Let's give her a round of applause. Hi. Hi, what's going on, Matt? How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing quite all right today. How have you been since we last broke? Oh, busy as ever. (laughs) It seems very busy, but, you know, blessed and excited about what's to come. So I can't complain at all, you know? Yeah, no, this, this yeah, this, I, it's crazy how I've spoken to a lot of people and they say, oh my God, even during the pandemic, it's been so busy and it's just been super, super crazy. Um, I get it because I can't get anything done myself. Um, but I'm getting <laughs> it done. I'm getting it done somehow, some way. Um, so for those that didn't check out the IG live, um, during the pandemic, you know, we have plenty of time to really think about our lives and everything that we want to do in our lives and how we want to be perceived as an individual, as an artist, and anything that we do in this lifetime. I even read an article where uh, they were saying a lot of people were quitting their jobs because it, the pandemic gave them a new perspective about life and They'd rather do something where they're happy than rather be in a miserable job, miserable job that pays a lot of money. Um, during this time, did you think about how you want to elevate your businesses that you already have? Or do you, did you think about how you want to be perceived as an artist? What, what was going through your mind during this entire pandemic? I think I thought about it all in full. I thought about my kids. I thought about my husband. You know, he just retired from the military. We run our business. I thought about, you know, was the pandemic going to affect us, you know, when it first hit? I'm like, oh, my God, now no one's going to book a bounce house. But um, we were fortunate that, you know, the business actually picked up full force, you know, due to COVID because everyone was in the house, you know, with their kids, and the kids needed something to do. So we had parents booking bounce houses literally on the weekdays just to, keep their kids busy, you know, give them some PE as another parent called it, it's PE. Um, but also from our artistry, um, I don't know, I just got more creative. I wanted to work more um, on my craft. I wanted to work more on myself. Um, you know, I just wanted to put out more content. Like I, I figured since the world was, you know, basically everyone was on social media, I, I knew I should take advantage you know, of the fact that everyone was just on social media, constantly scouring the internet, looking at different things. This was going viral. That was going viral. I actually went viral on my TikTok for the I'm going to start my diet after this, and which, believe it or not, was my husband's idea because he was like, well, you steadily talk about you're going to do this diet and do that diet, and you ain't did nothing yet. Um, so he kind of made a joke out of it, and then, from you know, that's where that kind of, you know, took – you know, full force from there. Um, I, my, you know, me and my daughter, we got together, we videoed it, and it turned out to be very funny. People liked it. Um, right. So I guess you can say during the pandemic, I just was being very creative. I was like, look, the world is watching. This is my chance. And that's how I looked at it. Yeah, I spoke to a lot of people, and they said that they took the opportunity to, you know, get a lot of stuff done that they hadn't, 
that they couldn't get done. Obviously, we had a year off, kind of, even if you're working from home, you still had the opportunity mm -hmm. to do many things. I mean, you could do conferences, webinars, all kinds of different things in your craft. So it, it besides being the most horrible thing to happen in a long time in the universe, um, it was it also opened a lot of doors for many people. I mean, even with climate change, I mean, no no cars in the street, no people in the street. Yeah. The, the animals were happy. Mother Nature was happy. It was just like a oh, moment where, you know, the earth could breathe. It was like, okay, these people are not here anymore. I can do my thing. I can breathe. I can grow. I can do all these things. So, um, yeah. I ain't going to allow a lot of creatures out here out in the open foxes and everything they're like That's look man these people was not stay in the house <laughs> yeah, they're like oh what is this where are the people we can jump we can frolic like, nobody's gonna hit us you know with our cars the deers were like oh my god here we go um so that's fantastic but obviously the horrible part is people got sick um and people died during the pandemic but it opened a lot of perspectives and then people were able some people finished albums during this time were you able to finish any projects that you had, you know, opened that you were trying to get done? Yeah. I was actually able to release a single and drop a video, and I'm working now on more music now with teacher artists, and, you know, it's all about elevation from here, so I'm really only just trying to work with artists that I know, you know, want to really work and want to invest in themselves, and, right. you know, they're really about the thing. Yeah, I was talking, actually I was talking to my music producer and a lot of people have been contacting him through his music publisher to work with him and stuff like that. But he realizes one thing is that when he when he chooses the people that he works with, he has to see that the people are extremely motivated, um, that they're, they're willing to make an investment in themselves as well, that they understand the whole aspect of the business. So do you look for those things as well? Yes, I do. Because if you don't have a, if you don't even have to have a real budget, just have some money that you know you can put up. And say, right. Look, if this is all I got, I can match it. But just not to have anything at all and expect for someone to just keep pushing you and pushing themselves is unfair. So I look for artists that think like how I think. You know, hey, look, if we both got a little bit of money, we're going to put it together and we're going to make it work. We're going to choose the best path for us and just take the single as far as we can take it, you know? Right. And there's there's so many. I was just talking to an individual who said he didn't, oh, he doesn't have money, he can't do this, he needs to be seen, he needs to promote his work, blah, blah, blah. I said, but there's so many ways you don't, you can get your music out there now without even needing money. You can be on all these different social media platforms and still promote your music. And so something I think is just a cop out when people say, well, I don't have any money and I can't do this and I can't do that because there, where there is a will, there is a way. Yeah, that's that woe is me effect. I don't believe in it. Because oftentimes when you start making excuses, it's like you, you, you're you literally, you know, making excuses. You're excusing your way out of a blessing because right. it didn't take any money to do that. I'm going to start my diet after this thing on TikTok that I went viral for. I already had ice cream in my house. I already had Oreos. I, my husband made chili fries. I mean, it's just that simple. It's like how bad do you want it? It's just all about consistency and marketing yourself and just get, doing your best. But you got to put yourself out there to the people or they will never really know who you are. Exactly. Exactly. So where do you get your, your drive from, you know, your ambition? <laughs> well, oftentimes I say my kids because I just want them to see. I want them to see me, you know, see mommy out here, you know, just really chasing her dreams. It's hard. You know, it's very hard. Um, I just want them to know that they'll be able to do whatever they want to do and, and be successful at it as long as they work at it. You know what I'm saying? No matter what speed they go, I prefer them to take them time, their time. But mainly my kids, um, because I feel like I just want to show them that where there's a will, there's a way, and, and anything that you put your mind to, you can do it. Um, also, you know, oftentimes people that tell me no or that mm. down talk, you know, whatever I do, because, uh, you know, in spite of jealousy or at the moment or whatever, like if they just say anything negative when I'm doing my very best, those are the ones that I say, okay, you know what? I'm not necessarily proving a point to them. I'm just showing okay. them that everything that they say I can't do or they say I don't do it the way they like it, that's okay. I'm going to just get it done and I'm going to be successful at it. So 
Hey, I use anything as motivation to drive me to do what I need to do, you know, whether good or bad, because oftentimes the critics are the ones that become fans later anyway. You're right. Isn't that always the case? They're like, oh, my gosh, wow. This is, whoa. Ah, I didn't know she had that drive. Uh That's what happened to my uh, music producer. He said when he started out, you know, he had sent some music somewhere in. You know, they're they're like, oh, it's okay, blah, blah, blah. And now that same producer wants to work with him because he's done so well in the music industry. It's like sometimes, you know, there are times you just don't push people away because you never know where that person's going to be. You just don't know. Exactly. Um, So it's an interesting dynamic, this whole music entertainment business. Now, how would you describe your music? Mm, Well... I'm very unique, just like my name. I'll try just about any genre of music because I feel like I can touch every audience of people. I feel like I'm allowed to do that. I feel like I deserve my opportunity to be able to do that. Right. So I just, if I had to place it up on the genre, I can't, but I can just say that my music is very unique. I'm not afraid of, I'm not afraid of being versatile. I'm not afraid of trying anything new um, right. musically because you never know. You you might try. I might try pop one day or EDM, and be so dope at EDM, so mm-hmm. when the streams go crazy and I'm not, and you know now I'm noticed, you know just for the EDM vibe. So right. um, I, I don't discriminate when it comes to genres. I feel like I can do it all, and I'm gonna. Yeah, I love um, being an indep- an independent artist and a versatile one because it allows. Uh, people to be able to see your versatility and everything that you can do. And people that are more versatile can actually get more music into sync placements, you know, and TV, film, documentaries, commercials, whatever the case may be. I think that if you're good Mm -hmm. at one genre, if that's your thing, then fine. But when you're a multi-genre person, my God, you, you, you just have way more avenues for your music. Now, a lot of people will say to me, they'll come to me, Oh, you know, what's your genre? I just say I'm an artist I create. And they're like, no, 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 what's your genre? I mean, one person really pushed me on it. And I said, well, I do. Well, I'm a multi-genre. No, no, no. You have to have one genre. Blah, blah, blah. So I focus oh, on you- it. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't have to have one genre. That's the problem with people. People are just, they, they, they live in a dream world. Like, music is universal. Right. You, you have the greatest songwriters of all time, like Ryan Michael Cox, that writes pop. R&B, hip-hop and R&B. He writes rap. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, he, you got people like Elton John. You get what I'm saying? Like, but he can dabble into punk rock if he really wanted to just from the piano, but it's a certain way that he plays it. So it right. just kills me when people try to put you in a box because you're not all the way out there, but they'll make excuses for all of the big names. Like, it's okay if Beyonce goes and rap, but oh, you're yeah. a singer. Why are you rap? You get right. what I'm saying? It just doesn't to me it's, it's funny it's funny to me it's funny to me it's crazy I, like you said uh, people just want to box you in one box you know I have chosen um, Americana but just because Americana you can do so many different genres I am still doing the other genres because the thing is if you're writing for sync and licensing and stuff like that not every not every TV show does a specific genre so you have to look at the genre that they're looking for for that particular show so if you can write in that exactly. genre, why not do it? I mean, and even yeah. with, you know, with the Grammys, you know, when they um, are trying to process a lot of the music and trying to figure out where they where it goes, they're now saying it's become very difficult because people are meshing, putting, combining all of the genres together, creating new mm-hmm. dynamic things, which is fantastic because I think that, you know, music should evolve over time. It's just, it, it should mm-hmm. And and people shouldn't box us. I do agree with you. How important is it for you as an artist, you know, as an entrepreneur to be able to speak your truth about, you know, how important is it to be authentic as a person and and as an artist? It's it's very important. I really, truly want to stay true to myself and walk with integrity in anything that I do. And that's why oftentimes, um, when I am propositioned, because us females, we do get propositioned. Um, mm. When I say, when, my, when I give my response, they're shocked, you know, but I think they know it be coming. They know that I'm not going to be that. 
they can just tell because they'll say, you scare me. How do I, how do I scare you? Just because I'm not willing to do what somebody dumb would do. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? Just to get on. You can have something to hold over my head. Like, this just not anything that I'm interested in. You know, I want people to love me for my music. I want them to appreciate and respect my grind and my hustle. But most importantly, I want them to know that I walk with integrity because I'm a mom before I'm anything else. And if I'm out here doing all kinds of wild stuff, my kids are right here looking. You get what I'm saying? So for me, it's different. I, I want you to, what I want is for people to learn how to separate like how they used to do. They used to be able to separate the artist from the artist's real life mm-hmm. to where you respect the artist for the music and the quality of music and the respect on stage that, that, you know, that they gave off and that they, you know, that they deserve. And in their, their personal life was their business. But now social media has it to where people have to know every little thing about you. And then when they do that, they find ways to try to use it against you. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen, you know? It, it, you know what? That whole diamond dynamic is very interesting. You know, the whole, we have to have our own personal lives as well as being able to do, be in the entertainment industry. And it's, it's a crazy, here's a, how I look at it. You know, obviously mm-hmm. it's the fans that carry us over. It is. If we, if people didn't have fans, they wouldn't be noticeable. They wouldn't be on the screen or they wouldn't be singing because you have to generate people that love your music. You have to generate income and they're part of that process. Now, yeah. I do believe as artists or actresses or whatever we're doing in our lifetime that, you know, you've you got to give them a little bit. You don't, you, you shouldn't give them all because you're not required to do that. But you have to give yeah. back to the fans that gave you that, that give, are giving you this opportunity. Because then without the fans, there's nothing. So, you know, when I see like actors or actresses or artists that rebuff their fans, I think that's really sad. Or I'll give you a prime example Lauren Hill. Mm-hmm. Lauren Hill, oh, is, she's a great <laughs> singer. But I'm sorry, I am not going to waste my time on Lauren Hill, who's, who's, you always late at any concert that she gives. It's disrespectful to the fans. I mean, she'll, she'll, she'll be two, two, two hours late, an hour late. You've paid your hard-earned money to go see her perform, and recently somebody posted something where it's like how she gets offended that people are telling her she's late and they don't da 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 I don't care how good you are. I hate when people are late. That's number one because I can't stand that, but and that's just me. <laughs> but two, two hours late, but yet you want me to be like, oh, well, you came on the stage anyway. No, but, but I paid for a certain amount of time. I'm the one that's put my my money into investing in your product. That you're supposed to come out here and perform for me and thousands of other people and going to come back to me and say, I need to get a life because I'm mad because you're late and you think that you're just a shit. It, it shouldn't work that way. And I do a agree. Lot of artists, Go ahead. They'll say Go ahead. Concert, not to cut you off, but a lot of artists, big name artists are like that. They feel uh-huh. like um, that they're allowed to do that. It's like once you get to a certain level, they, they think that they can do that. Like I like, as crazy as it sounds, I know the baby's on the fire right now, but I can appreciate him as far as um, his work ethic and his dedication to his fans. Because that same what is rolling loud? The same place where he said that, you know, messed up stuff on stage or whatever, or mm-hmm. stated his opinion and no one liked it or whatever the case might be because I'm not taking sides. Um, I'm talking about him as an artist. He paid an extra $10,000 just to perform longer for the crowd. Mm. Only for the crowd to turn around and diss him and shun him because, he, you know, he, he said, the, you know, he gave his opinion in which everyone didn't agree with it. But I feel like if we're in America, this is land of the free home of the brave, if I feel a certain way, that's how I feel. Um, everyone doesn't have to agree, but if you're a fan of me, you have to be a fan of me. A lot of artists like to, you know, so he, you know, like I said, for him to do that, you know, I don't agree with how he did it, but I can respect that he paid the extra $10,000 to be out to perform longer for the folks that rock with him. Because that right there shows that as an artist, like you say, he respects your pocket. He respects the money that you had to go work and earn to buy your ticket to come up in there. Um I, you know, a lot of artists that do that respect them. You got a lot of big names. They don't do that. It's like once they get up there, they'll say that the show starts at 8 o'clock. You'll be there at 10, 11 o'clock waiting on them to start the show. 
It's like they all do it, and I do not understand why. It's like come get the show over with so these people can get home. They're already going to say it's, gonna, uh, uh, it's already going to take like an hour just to get out of traffic to get on the highway for them to get home. So you just further delay in their process. They're here to support you because they rock with you. They bought a ticket because they rock with you. The least you can do is be on time. And here's the problem with our world right now. People in, you know, in the United States, people, obviously, we have a huge um, freedom of expression here. Um, But what people realize is that some of the freedom of expression, people have gone too far. And I think that um, people should have the right to their own opinion. But it's also the way you project those opinions. And those opinions may be offensive. Whether it's your right, they may be offensive. I know as a person from Haitian descent, my parents are from Haiti, I was born here. There's nasty things said about Haiti. They eat, they eat mud and dirt. They have AIDS okay. with that. It's just, that's cruel. They don't even understand the whole Haitian populace anyway. Um, so I can understand why people get offended when people say things, even if, it, if it's their right uh if their opinion it's their opinion, but it's also the way you project that p- opinion. Also, I think it's unfair that we as artists or, or business women, you know, have to take on the responsibility of being role models for other people. I think parents should be role models for their kids because you have to be able to live your own life. You can't worry about, oh my gosh, well if I say this or if I say that, you know, people are going to get upset. See. That's where the problem lies. Like I say a lot of stuff, but I always think about the things that I'm going to say. It's like I'm in a certain environment. Um, like for, for me, I won't play anything that has the N-word. I don't use it. It's very offensive to me. I don't care if you're black, white, Chinese. I don't care. The word means what it means. You can't change it. Never change it. It's part of history. It's never, never going to change. And people use it all the yeah. time. It's I can't. Yeah, I have so. one. I have one friend of her tone. She says that I said, uh, I'll always have to remind her. She says, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know you hate that word. Um, because the thing is, what people don't understand, black people, black people have been conditioned to believe that about themselves. I will never be that. I'm sorry. I just will never be that. And so some people, well, I've changed it. No. <laughs> no. And then, you know, when people put the word in, in, in a song and then people just get upset and, and when somebody else sings it, then don't put it in the song. Or give them a portion of their, the money back. Because if I'm going to buy a song and you put it in the song, I'm just going to sing it. Don't tell me what to do. It's just the whole dynamic of things in this world is, is just crazy. And over time, I think that, a lot of people's sensitivity has just come out. You know what I mean? It's just, it's sad. It's just sad. Mm-hmm. It's just sad. And, and, you know, people have the right to be sensitive. If something really affects them, then that's that's who they are. I mean, who are we to tell people not to feel? You know what I mean? It's just we have to learn to, like, you know, Nikki and I always say, together we are stronger. We have to learn to agree to disagree and, and, and get back to a place where the world is just very simple. <laughs> and I don't know how long – I don't know if I'll see that in my lifetime. But, hey, I'm going to try to work towards it. Now, I'm going to play your song, Love Jones. What is that about? Love Jones is a pop song. It's literally a song I wrote in 10 minutes. <laughs> I, I needed a song. Q-O-D-E-E-E-V, I needed another song. And I had heard the track before. And okay. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and let me just give this a shot. So it's just like a little bubblegum pop song. It's really, really nice. It's a love song. And I hope that you guys like it. All right. Hold, um, hold on and we're going to play it. We'll have a word from our sponsor, and then we'll play it. Hi, this is Nikki Chris, and I host a podcast called Mixin' It. Mixin' It focuses on women in the music, entertainment, and the performing arts. Our goal is to provide an avenue for industry veterans and up-and-coming artists, musicians, engineers, and producers to showcase their talent. Listen to Mixin' It on Monday Music Madness at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Sim Radio Network.
That's a really fun song. Yay, I'm glad you like it. <clears throat> no, I really enjoyed that. What is, what is your um end goal for your music career? Really, truly, a lot of people, they were like, oh, my God, I think that you do pop so well. I think you should stick with pop. And then you got people that's like, well, you sing R&B so well. You do hip hop so good. I don't know. But really, truly, I just want to really, honestly, I want to be a songwriter. I want to write for people. Mm. And I, I want to see you perform it and just kill it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, that, that's what I really, truly want in the near future. But I do also want my face to be out there as far as an artist, too. Because oftentimes, like, say, for example, with Carrie Hilson, she started out writing music for people. And when she yeah. put out an album, nobody respected like they should have. So I felt like if I come out as an artist first, get your respect. Then from there, you know, I got it. Now, when I lean back and I say, look, this is for you, to K. Michelle or anybody, they're more accepting of it because they see they saw what I could do with it. So there's sky's the limit as, what, as to what they can do with it when they hear the lyrics. You get what I'm saying? And that's what I'm about. So song. Songwriting is what I eventually want to get into. That way, I have I still have all the time freedom I need to spend time with my kids and live my life and run my business. <laughs> yeah. What do you love about being an artist? I like performing on stage. I really, truly enjoy performing on stage. I like being able to get people's opinions on my songs. You know, like, you know, do you like it? Okay, how did it make you feel? Like, I like to ask those questions. You know, even when I come off stage, I'll just ask random people. They were like, I love that. I'm like, okay, great. What did you like about it? And then they were like, I like this certain part, you know? So things like that, you know, just kind of, you know, getting a feel for what the people feel when they hear the music, you know, because like I say, it's like a creative, you know how it is. You're a singer yourself, yeah. an artist yourself. The creative process for us is we're writing it. Oftentimes when we're done recording a song, we're basically done with it. If we got to go back and sing it for crowds of people, we're wanting to know why they love it so much, why are they requesting this song so much. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because yeah. we're done with it after we record it, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, what do you love about being an actress? Oh, man. Being able to play different parts, being able to be different people. You know, I have a split personality anyway. I'm a Sagittarius. So, you know, we're very caring, loving, hardworking individuals. We're chameleons. We can really adapt to any environment. Um, You know, our surroundings, we don't have a problem with adapting. You know, we know how to adapt well. And so, I don't know. I just like being able to, you know, discover a character and be that character, then hop Mm. out that one and be this character like it to me it's fun it's like a little game to me <laughs> I don't know how that sounds but you know it's fun that's cool I'm also a Sagittarius so I know where I know where you're coming from with all that and I, I, I completely and utterly get it I completely get it um I mean you do it all you basically do it all and I think that's inspiring um And it's also empowering um, for other women to see people like you doing their thing and getting it done and and being a wife and and having children um, because you have several names to yourself. I mean, several jobs to who you are and you're able to get everything done. Um, Yes. So that's fantastic. I had had one guy from Kenya, um, one of my supporters, Gaddy Richard from Kenya, he say, uh, he said, uh, boss lady, you have so many faces. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what does that mean exactly? He was like, oh, no, it's a good thing. We pray for you every day because he was like, you're so talented. You go from singing, and then we'll see you on live, and you're dealing with your kids. You're right. crying because they're, go- they're going to school and leaving you home. Then you're around here talking about an R&B sweet snack line, and we see you packaging your stuff, trying to ship stuff out. He was yeah. like, you just got so much going on. And it's just amazing because he said the everyday woman is not doing it like that. Not every woman does it like that. He said there's only special types that, that can move like that. And I was like, okay, I appreciate it. You know, that's an evaluation that I didn't expect to get, you know, from someone that's so far overseas, but he watches every day. You know, he's always right. on my lives. He sees it. He follows our business page, so he sees me out there pulling the bounce house up and rolling the bounce house. So he's like, this girl, she's like eight different people in one. And and again, as a Sagittarius, that's just something that we're great at. We're hard workers. We're determined. You know, we have what they call, uh, I don't even know, self-inspiration. Like we'll inspire ourselves. Like something will make us mad to the point where we'll just get out here and give it a shot and, and be great at it because we gave it our all because we were trying to prove to ourselves that it can be done or whatever the case might be. So 
Yeah, God is good all the time. I'm blessed. Huh? And that you are. So we're going to play your song, Kill a Swag. Tell us what that's about. Okay, kill, I just emailed you the clean version because I was like, you know what? It's just syndicated. I apologize. <laughs> so, um, kill us. Okay, so this is a song, and I'm going to be real. I got to tell you the truth. This song is is a fun song. It, it can be kind of like a women's empowerment song. Um, it just talks about, you know, the type of woman that I am, the type of woman that my homegirl Moxie is because she starts the song off. And um, we're, we're just having fun with lyrics and words, um, not taking anything personal, although my lyrics came from a personal place because some women that I was friends with really made me upset, and mm. I needed a way to get it out. And oftentimes, me, the best way for me to get it out is to put it in the music. Amen. So that's what I did with Killer Swag, trying to let, you know, trying to let people know that sometimes whenever you, you know, you have a diamond around you and you tend to forget about, you know, how shiny that diamond is or just how precious they are to you, you know, when you do it, when you when you throw that diamond in the dirt, you know, you just know that, you know, the diamond is going to keep shining. You ain't, you ain't kill, you didn't kill the shine of, you didn't kill the diamond off. It's still there shining, you know? So Amen. that's what Killer Swag is about. It, yeah. <laughs> Amen. I love it already. I haven't even heard. Let's, let's, let's do it. Yeah. 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 It's a drug. <laughs> and my old lady, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's and a I'm bad thing. With my homegirl, oh my singer, Yeah. Yeah. It's me, my. Oh. She a bad bitch, but I'm not so slick. Uh-huh. Go from zero to a hundred real quick. Don't give her what she wants, she'll have a bitch. Never put baddies in her click, she like me yeah. out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Lip gloss poppin', hell yeah. Hair done, nails done, feet did. Yeah. Don't fuck with that cheap shit. Nah. Around the way, baddie. Uh-huh. A little ghetto, but classy. Uh-huh. She a cutie and a freak. Uh-huh. A boss with her own money. Yeah, yeah. Body tight, uh-huh. credit right. Uh-huh. Passports, taking flight, self-made. Walk around here with integrity. Never again will you hold get that best of me. Friends turn to strangers, your hope can't come out of me. No, possibility for living in luxury. They hang while they want my company. Sending what is all they see. All they in love with me. Huh. I stay with two bands on my hip. Oh yeah, I'm saucy, I got that drip drip. A little bossy, classy background here. Control your tongue when you say my name there. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you and your life. That shit don't carry weight round here. Body tight. Red ride, they fly, I'm so bad. I say we motherfucking bad. ending (laughs) it's it's truly sad how you know you have to work so hard with marriages and and boyfriend girlfriend or girlfriend and girlfriend boyfriend and boyfriend relationships and and yet you still have to work so hard at certain friendships Mm -hmm. yes and those people can be you can they can try to downgrade you they can try to treat you make you feel like shit for no reason it's because of whatever they're going oh, through yeah. their own soul mm-hmm. but I find that <clears throat> in listening to your song because I've been through that ah, I've been through that this past six years in the pandemic and realized a lot about many different people in my life so I had to go because I'm just not going to tolerate that crap anymore in my life you know you have to love yourself first um, and uh realize what's what's good for you and your surroundings. That's right. And I Mm -hmm. don't know why people can just be so supportive. Why? You know, it's just it's crazy to me. It's almost like if they support you and if they uplift you, 
Mm -hmm. then that means they got to take a back seat for just a moment. I hung around women that have their own following. They have their own thing going. I hang... I hang around people that have their own following, got their own thing going. But I'm right. the type of person I'm going to support. I'm going right. to tag you. I'm going to share you for no reason just because I woke up and felt like it. But it was like with them, I wasn't getting that in return. It was like I had to beg for it or I know you be sharing us so you want us to share you back, huh? You know, things of that nature or you're the boss so you can buy the pizza. You know, things like that. Just like stuff that was like disrespectful, out of line. And it just, it, I just got to a point where I was like, look, man. This ain't going to work. So for me to walk away was very big of me. Trust me. Right. My husband was like, I'm so proud of me. Because I beat myself up for two years hanging around people that I knew weren't right for me. And right. um, it was it, it was it was killing me um inside. It was, you know how it is. You're a female. Like you said, you went through it, uh, you know, during the pandemic with females. So you get it. It's like, it was happening way before the pandemic. But the pandemic really helped me to realize that exactly. I was bigger and better than the situation bigger and better than them in a lot of ways because I don't treat people like how they were treating me. Exactly. Like I, don't, I, wouldn't do, I wouldn't do someone like that. And I know that. And for me to even be around it and I saw them doing it to others, you know, and, and I just would ignore it because I'm like, well, at least I know I'm in, but I was never really in. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's like, once you realize that it's time to go. Yeah. No, and yeah, my no, time, I, it was time to go. I mean, I was in the same, same situations that, yeah, I agree with you. The pandemic really made you self reflect and say, why was I in this situation? And what, you know, you do all this stuff for people and then they turn around and, and just do some shady stuff or, or they're just not supportive or, or they're, I, or they're power hungry. Look, I don't, I'm not here to be in, in competition with anybody. I think we're all on the same playing field. You know, we work at a, we might work at a different level, but we're all on the same, the same playing field. And what people don't realize is that it's better to uplift people and try to work together. You know, I, I try to share people's stuff as much as I can. If somebody's done something, even if it's like they found the perfect parking space, you know, I applaud people all the time. I just don't have time for the, the nastiness and, in worrying about what somebody else is doing. I'm focused on what I'm doing. Yes, if I can help somebody else, I, I, I try to do my best, you know? The goodness, uh, the goodness in you, the goodness in you, Nat, is the Sagittarius in you. That's one thing about a Sagittarius. We're going to make sure everybody get a seat at the table. We're going to make sure everybody eats. But folks are not like that. It's like people nowadays, they're all about themselves. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's very seldom you'll find individuals like you and I that are willing to support for no reason, look out for no reason, save a person a uh, parking space, save them a seat at the table, whatever. Introduce them to the right people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a situation where um, I, I had a falling out with a friend and and then a, a mutual friend just stopped talking to me. The person wasn't even involved in the situation. And I always tell people, if I have a falling out with somebody, don't unfriend those people because it's not between you and them. It's between me and this other person. So I don't understand when people do that. It's just shady oh, and all oh, hell. But they'll learn. They have a lesson, lesson to learn. Um, so what is one thing you, would, you wish you had known about any of the businesses that you do um, before you got into them? I wish I would have known with my R&B sweet line just how hard it is to, um, (laughs) because I did the research before I started, but Mm. I wish I would have known how hard it is to market an edible product. You get what I'm saying? Um, With white chocolate, dark chocolate, you know, um, did the research on the storage, you know, how to ship it, all that stuff like that. But just how hard it is to get other people to help push the, mm. um, because with music, it's not that hard. Music is universal. If they work right. with, if they walk in with the song, they're going to share it. But what, with the snack line, they know what they're doing. They know they're helping you in a way. So it's like, uh, do I want to help push the brand? You get, you get what I'm saying? So mm. just just when, when it comes to pushing and distribution, I wish I would have known how hard it was going to be to put it all together. But now I'm good. But it, it, it was a journey because last year I, I started prematurely and wasn't ready. Now this year I'm totally ready. So everything's going to work itself out. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think a lot of people don't realize, especially with the music business, how much work it takes. It takes a lot of time and energy 
to focus on music. I mean, you got to market, you got to promote, you got to be on every damn social media site there is out there. You have to have a website. You got to get your music out there. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do TikTok. You got to be on YouTube. You got to. So there's not even enough time. There's not enough hours in a day to do music, let alone try to do, you know, three or four different crafts. You have to really be uh, well organized. Um, And I think one of the biggest things if you're doing music is that music is subjective. Not ever, Some people are going to love what you do. Some people are not going to like it. And that's okay. You have to love it. That's the most important thing. You have to love it. So what is one uh, quote that you like to use um, every day to push yourself if you do? Believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. Believe mm-hmm. in yourself because I'm going to tell you right now, oftentimes, We'll listen to people tell us how great we are, mm-hmm. but if we don't see it for ourselves, it, it's like they're talking to a blank canvas. Like It's like they're talking to a wall. If you don't see the greatness in yourself, it took me a long time to see the greatness in myself because I believe I was running away from the possibility. You know, some people, they don't want to fail, but I'm okay with failing if, if, if I'm going to win in the end. I'm okay with failing if I'm going to win in the end. And oftentimes with failure comes a win because you learn from that mistake that you made and then you get back up and you do it the right way and then you win. And that's how life works. Life is full of ups and downs. It's full of um, trials and tribulations. You're going to go through. Life is not going to be perfect. People need to stop thinking that if they just go into something that everything is just going to work itself out immediately. No, it takes time. Slow and steady wins the race. When I stopped rushing, that's when I started winning. I'm going to say it again. When I stopped rushing, that's when I started winning. And I promise you, when I stopped rushing, because last year and the year before, and even the year before that, I was just doing too much, trying to be in every place, trying to perform everywhere. And it didn't, there was, there was productivity, but there was no long lasting productivity. You get what right. I'm saying? There wasn't enough exposure to leave behind. So it marinated on your mind where you were like missing Daniqua because I was trying to be everywhere on the scene. Once I realized how important it was to be where I needed to be and to be places that I didn't need to be, it all made sense to me. And now look at me. You know, the, my following is growing. The supporters are there. They're active. They're talking to me. They're saying what they want from me. And I'm providing you know, right. versus me not hearing them because I was too busy trying to support other people, too busy trying to be on the scene, too busy trying to just do a million things in one instead of focusing on what's really important. And that right. my dreams, my aspirations, my family, and, 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 and balance. You got to have balance in your life. I agree with you 100% on that one. Well, Denise, thank you so much for being on Chatting with Nat. I always love chatting with you because you are, I learned so much from you, and we're both Sagittarius, so that's phenomenal. Um, and we're doing great things out there, and we're both, you know, trying to help each other, trying to help other people, and trying to do our thing, and you're doing it. So people should definitely go check you out um, with everything that you're doing out there. Um, it's just fantastic. So thank you again for being on the show. I hope you have a great rest of the week. You too. Thank you so much, Ned. I appreciate you. Have a blessed afternoon now, Mama. Same to you. Thank you. And that was Denise. She's a singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, actress. She does it all. Check her out. Until next time on Chatting with Ned. <laughs> is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Love your voice.